Sizo Kalange, Silen Kosi, Mokacho Hane, Isasugo says Kombisa, John Seven, Kusugele Evesin Lama Shumamatat, Nantat, from verse thirty three. Kepang was so good Olukulu lomkosi, uje suwe ma wameme zawati, uma eko na owomileyo ageze gimi apuze. From verse 37, on the last day of the feast, the great day, Jesus stood up and cried out, if anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. Okolo agiimi, jongo kusho kompalo. Whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. We'll read thus far. Ngi kumbula inko sing biza uguting msuge ekaya ngioshuma elivangeli. I remember when the Lord called me to leave home to preach the gospel. It was very difficult to me. And I remember saying to my older brother from Tunzini that leaving home was like death. Umang puma enzi nigababa kubengati kupumistumbu. Leaving my father's home was like a corpse leaving the home. Koto kukona enga kushoyo. Ngati umangi tingu kushuma elivangeli. Angizi misele neze ugutingi lalengo kolwa. But something I did say was, if I must leave to go and preach the gospel, I am determined never to play around with the gospel. I want to preach the gospel just like Jesus did. Noma ese tempelini, noma ese intabini. Whether in the temple or the mount, I want to speak the truth. I don't want to play around with the faith. Because leaving home was extremely difficult for me. Manje and so I determined to preach the truth, to shout it out right till the end. At that time, revival was a special topic to me in my heart. I tried to read every book about it, about the working of the Holy Spirit. And I read fervently about men of God through whom the Lord worked. And I said, Lord, this is what I need. I was young at that time. And I took the Bible literally as God's word. And I would pray, Lord, this which you say in your holy word, in the Bible, 
I want it to be accomplished in my life. Antandi nje ukuthi ngibe ngumfundisi nje ozobhabhadisa abantu abamukelisa isidlo senkosi kusisonte sonte ngithanda ukuthi nkosi I said, Lord, I don't want to just play with church, baptizing people, dishing out the Lord's Supper and all this regular churchianity, but not knowing, not having the Lord. Now to shorten the story, Gikumbula ngo 1966. I remember back in 1966. Gi slupegi len katazegi le moye. I was so frustrated, troubled in my spirit. Gitanda za emi ni nasepsugu ugutunkulunkulu eche zuluini. I would be praying day and night that God would come down from heaven, that the Lord would work by His Holy Spirit and pour out His Holy Spirit. And I remember being so anguished in those days. And for in the beginning the Bible had been sweeter to me than honey. Ngoba is a tembiso as is a pipe for the promises I found in the Bible were marvelous. For instance, where the Lord said, if my words abide in you and you abide in me, you can ask what you wish, it will be done for you. That filled my heart with great joy. Like in John 14, 12, where he said, Verily, verily. He who believes in me, he will do the works that I do, even greater, for I go to the Father. I took that literally as the truth. I said, Lord, I believe in you. Therefore the works that you did I should do not because I am anything but because you go to the Father. Focusing at the tempies, not Johanna 16, 40. What can one say of the promises like John 16, 20? You haven't yet asked anything from the Father in my name. For anything you ask of the Father in my name, he will do. I said, Lord, that is so wonderful, more precious than riches. Than the things of the world. I said, Lord, 
such promises surpass everything else. Nasa nga shuma ye li vangelike imnyaka e shumi nambili parati kwa bakwa zulu. And so I'd been preaching the gospel for 12 years among the Zulu people. Kodwa emva kwe mnyaka e shumi nambili but after those 12 years natsuka nga japa I was disappointed. Ngoba leyo nto ibi nga fezegi for these promises were not being fulfilled in my life. And one day at Mapumulu, I remember, I remember, we were in meeting inside a, a cow shed that had been adapted for our prayer meetings. We cleaned it up together with some of the prisoners from the local jail and we sent the dung outside and made it clean. And there we met. For we didn't have a meeting place. We just had a tent. And so and so it was in between tent meetings. I would have a tent where I'd evangelize for a long time, then take it down, move to the next area. And in between, I went then to Mapumulo. One day, while in a service in that building, I said, brethren, let me ask you, who of you in our midst believes in Jesus? All of them lifted up their hands. I said, I said, well, that's wonderful. I'm so glad to see it. But I followed on by saying, there is a problem though to me. For Jesus said, if we believe in him, as the scriptures say, rivers of living water will burst forth from his innermost being. Not one river, but many rivers. And I said that if you have a river that goes into a desert. It can change the desert into a garden. But I knew I'd been preaching for 12 years. And there was not living water. In 1954, 55 in Namibia. And I remember back in 1954, 1955, we were there in Namibia where we visited a certain relative there. And was was it he? And he told us, he said, there is no country as wonderful as our country. At that time, it was called Southwest Africa. 
wate agen agen pume kukone en funugun nige kombisa go men he said i want to go out with you i'd like to show you something be we so li le kukona nemfu la emkhule gweli sabathi kodwa manza ngabikho for at that time there were many um river beds but no water in them what he got was his son to go ball and up and got in the pumpy wings but he said though i have just um bored a hole in the front of our garden satola man zamani and we found a lot of water what i'm going home benani in compies and he said let me go with you and show you why say okay what i think of me she why quality song a man see what the hello how pulls and he said he filled then a glass of water for me from that and said earlo drink of it now what i think it in your pose and as i took it to drink i'm a pose i in my mouth i realized it's just undrinkable Moba be konu sawo tine zinte zingi ezinga ma mineral emanzi. It was full of salt and many minerals in it. Ngabuya. I just ngawa keep a fool. Spit it out. Why is this landis? And then he Et told ye, us. He atogo zamsuwa nestola laman. He said, when we found this water, we were so delighted. Landis. We could have. Flow with joy. God of Uma, so we are not bitter. So we are not apathetic. The moment we drank of it, we realized it's undrinkable. Our Kalunga, my Natunga Kali, Ngoba, Uzo a seven zisen gati ni. Sibe ne khabishi sibe ne zinte ningi engati nembali and he told us how he uh, his wife was so disappointed he said don't worry i can make sure that we can use this water for a good vegetable garden in our, on our lawn for the enzi ni yetu kukonimbali so he tell an alaman si ikulega in our yard and there were many flowers in the flower bed and he said we will pour water on them we will use it for that uma be watela bani selizinto ngishendlin phakathi kukhona izinto ezinembali phakathi and there were also uh, flower pots inside the house uma be wanisela ngalamanzi but as they began to water these plants all the planted things wilted and died why is it i no masinga kwazi kwasebenzise ngadini uzo wasebenzise kwashini uwashe sikwashi ingubo zethu ngazi and then he said well if we can't use it in the garden let's use it for washing our clothing then uma be wasebenzisa bathola ukuthi ingubo zabo ziyahepuka ingubo ziyonakala kakhulu ezelinini nengube zinhle zalimala zonke and he said when we tried that we discovered that all our clothing and especially the linen was ruined with this mineral water lape kusho lokho and when he said that ngathi mina elo sekuyimnyaka ishumi nambili ushuma yelivangeli i said to myself elo you've been preaching the gospel for 12 years kodwa lamanzi aphuma kuwe but the water that comes out of you is not living water it's just like this ruinous 
mineral water. But Jesus was speaking about living water. I said, Lord, that's me. I believe, I preach the gospel, but when the people receive the word, instead of coming alive, they die. So back to this little meeting in that car shed in Mapumulu, I asked them who believes and all of them lifted up their hands. And I said, good. And then I said, now tell me, Jesus went on to say, he who believes in me, out of his innermost being will flow rivers of living water. So I asked them, is this living water flowing out of your heart, out of your innermost being? Not one put up their hands. And uh, I realized that I'd been preaching for 12 whole, whole years, preaching the word, preaching the gospel, but I do not see any rivers of living water. I asked them, how long is it that you have been Christians? Are these rivers bursting forth from inside you? Living, Living water which brings life, not which brings death. I but they were stuck. Nami Nasupe, Kangati Kulunku, Imyaka Mninganga, Gishmael Evangeli, Nasho Futuman Shumael Evangeli, Gagan Sale Mokolo, and Fonu Guti, Ushmael Aguami, Kube Sekisi, Gifonu Guti, Kube Kiniso El Pilisai. And I remembered how I had said at the beginning, Lord, if I do preach the gospel, I want to preach the truth, that which brings life. I was deeply troubled in, inside me. Ngati mina, ngia shumayeli vangeli, ngi pizi ne vangeli, kotwa. And I said, I am busy with the gospel all the time, yet I don't see the fruit of it. And I said to myself, my brothers are all successful in businesses and farms, earning money, but I'm busy with something that does not work. I said, better that I stop. No one is troubled like I am, I said. 
For I'm busy with something that bears no fruit. And I was wrestling inside the struggle, crying to God day and night. Lenda ba iinde kuto nizo zamu kuifinga ibe mfushan. Now the story is much longer. I'm just making it a short summary. God 1966 And then I was visited by my oldest brother who had a business there at Mapumulu, a shop. And I stayed in his home. And I preached the gospel. But I was crying in my heart saying, Lord, wouldn't you pour out your Holy Spirit? Wouldn't you work among the people? It was about two o'clock that night, that following morning. And I was in an old part of the house. And there was a and I woke up at that time of the morning and I was wet with sweat. I had no fever, I was not sick at all, but it was the struggle inside me. My pajamas were wet. My pillow was wet. And I turned it around. I had my Bible there, which I put next to the bed. It was quite a low bed. Now, it's many years ago, but I remember it vividly till today. And and I remember how on my left and behind me there was a wall. And and I reached for my Bible which I put next to the bed. I switched on the light. And I took the word and read. I just opened it. It was in John chapter 4. Kutua always fazane was a Samaria. Weza ezo kukamanzi. Uche suwati kuye ngipuzi se. Where it says in verse 4, verse 7. In, from verse 7, a woman from Samaria came to draw water and Jesus said to her, give me a drink. Ngogu baba fundi bake babe hambile for his disciples had gone away into the city to buy food. And 
Engi ngoe swazane wase Samaria na. The Samaritan woman said to him, How is it that you, a Jew, ask for a drink from me, a woman of Samaria? For Jews have no dealings with Samar Samaritans. <laughs> Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is that is saying to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you have nothing to draw water with, and the well is deep. Where do you get that living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob? He gave us the well and drank from it himself, as did his sons and his livestock. Jesus said to her, everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again. Kodwa, opuza la manzi, lowo oya upuza a manzi, engi agumnika wona, kai goma na pagate, kepa a manzi aya agumnika wona, pagati kwake. But whoever drinks of the water that I will give him will never be thirsty again. The water that I will give him will become in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I will not be thirsty or have to come here to draw water. Jesus said to her, Go, call your husband and come here. The woman answered him, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, You are right in saying I have no husband. husband. <laughs> For you have had five husbands, and the one you have is not your husband. What you have said is true. The woman said to him, Sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. Our fathers worshipped on this mountain, but you say that in Jerusalem is the place where people ought to worship. Jesus said, Jesus said to a woman, believe me, 
The hour is coming when neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem will you worship the Father. You worship what you do not know. We worship what we know for salvation is from the Jews. But the hour is coming and is now here when the true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and the truth. For the Father is seeking such people to worship Him. God is spirit, and those who worship Him must worship Him in spirit and truth. I'll read thus far. When I opened the Bible that night and read in this chapter, I didn't read all the verses that I've read for you now. But I noted that Jesus was thirsty as he went to that well and sat there while his disciples went to buy food in town. And when this woman came, Jesus asked her to give him water. What and she said, how can you ask me, you being a Jew and I being a Samaritan? For at that time, the Samaritans were like a mixed race and the Jews shunned them. You see, apartheid is not something recent. It's been there from ancient times. But let me say something that I actually didn't see that night. It was not the custom for women to go and draw water during the heat of the day. They would go in the morning. Noma. Or during the sunset hours. And they would no muntos petegabi. Only loose women would go and fetch water at that hour because those who were pure kept themselves apart and would go when it was not during the day and they would stick together and shun a sexually immoral woman. Ugufana na nam sanch, usangane bona, bonki, intom binto. It wasn't like today, but at that time, those who were 
virgin girls would keep themselves apart. They would discriminate. And so we can't go with you to fetch water. So a loose woman would go during the heat of the day alone. So it would have been round about lunchtime. So here is Jesus asking for water from her. What you how? O kalagi mi uli chuta mi nangi kalati. Ngoba beba benga tlani benga tlangani. She was astonished and said, "How can you ask me, you being a Jew and I being a person of the mixed race, because there was separation between them?" I. What he goes in Uzoku Kakanja Namans in Obum Tom, Bogacha Cope, Ushoni Lutulile, Aunasi, Isija, Sogu Kamans. And she said, Sir, how will you get the water yourself? For you do not have the utensils to draw up from this deep well. Why say Tiguye? Then he, said, he said, woman, if only you knew who you were speaking to, you would ask of him to give you living water. That's when she said, how can you draw water? You don't have the utensils. And then he said, if you drink of this water, you will get thirsty again. But if you drink of the water I give you, you will never thirst, no, for all eternity. Lamanzi, ozo atolagimi. Azoba untombo, pagatiwako. O pupumayo, o twalayo, o kopozayo. Kuzogube pagate. For the water that I would give you would become a, a well inside you which springs up for eternal life forever. I heard God speaking to me then. Always fazane wati ngi pela o manzi ukubangi ngezi jalo la mtonjini yoku kamans. And the woman said, "Give me of that water that I won't have to come here continually to draw water." Lenda ba yaba isi tomb. And that was the very picture of my life. Spiritually speaking. For we would hold meetings, revival meetings, and I would be blessed for that short time. But after a while, after a few weeks or months, again, I would feel the need to go and get more of it. And I said, Lord, this water of which you speak, that is what I need. That I wouldn't be thirsty again. And then I 
I remembered that when I preached to the people, for instance, the boys, the young men, they would be going off to the shop to buy magazines with naked pictures inside. And I would say, but Lord, they say they're believers. They have accepted Christ as their personal Savior, but here they are thirsting for the things of the world. And I would say, Lord, my preaching is not helping them at all because they would admit their sin, but then they'd go back to it again and confess their sin and yet go back to it again. For Jesus said, He who drinks of the water of this world will thirst again, but he who drinks of the water that I give will never thirst again forever. So the woman said, Give me of that water that I won't have to come and draw continually. And so that was the very picture of my life. I would go to a meeting and I would feel refreshed and revived. But it would be gone very soon after that and I'd need to go back again. It was drinking and being thirsty. Drinking and thirsty again. And the Lord met me that night in showing me the picture of my life that I was also one to go to meetings. I was blessed, but then it would dissipate. A few weeks later, it was gone, or a few months, and I'd need to go and drink again. I woke up that night wet with sweat and I was thirsty. And I said, Lord, I thirst for this water. Not just the physical water, though I was thirsty. I was thirsting for his water. And and I realized then that if a person truly becomes a believer in Jesus, he'll drink from the Lord and that which he drinks will become a fountain welling up within his own being forever. I Always 
So the woman said, give me of this water that I won't have to come and continually have to draw water here. Uchesu wat hambu bizindota yak. So Jesus said, go and call your husband. Lelo zi latandu mungum tita uchesu kudumang amans. Mandu se kudumang endota. I was confused by that. I thought, but Jesus is speaking clearly about water. Now he's referring to a husband. Uchesu bengezwa ini. Ukutilo is fazana. Didn't Jesus understand her question? Is Jesus now just uh, going off on a tangent, speaking about something else? Saying, go and call your husband. And she replied, I have no husband. And the Lord said, Indeed, you speak the truth. For you have had five husbands, and the one that you are with right now belongs to someone else. And I realized then that that is what is necessary for true revival, for this water. You need to name your husband, so to say. Those things that you've been sinning with. Your life must be straightened out. If you truly want revival, your life must be straightened. So when Jesus answers her request about giving this water, he says, but go and fetch your husband. In other words, he puts his finger on the nerve the very problem that was her, her, the crux of the matter. We don't like that. I remember once preaching in the area of Durban in a certain denomination and the pastor there called me or came to me and he said to me, tell me if you preach, do you ever touch on the subject of sin or not? And then he went on to say, you know, recently I tried it out. I just mentioned the subject of sin and I saw the, the congregation becoming stiff and uncomfortable in their seats. And I thought I'd better leave it. And I thought, what is he preaching? I thought, well, what is he preaching? Surely the Bible is so clear about sin. It says, you shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, etc. Presbyterian. 
It was the Presbyterian church, and he said, now I don't touch on the matter of sin anymore. My congregation doesn't like it. It was a white congregation. And he said, I saw that the people were extremely uncomfortable when I touched on the matter of sin. And but Jesus spoke very directly. He spoke right at the heart of the matter with this woman and said, you are right. You don't have any husbands. You've had five and the one you're with is not yours. You see, people don't like to hear about sin. You can speak about eschatology and this and that, but not to touch upon sin. A certain thing happened in Germany. An amazing thing. There were three men of very high positions. Now some mischievous young men, at that time they used a telegram because um, there weren't cell phones and email like we have today. And they sent three telegrams to these three. And they wrote very brief words. All is revealed. Everything has come to light. That's all. That was all. The first one, got his telegram, committed suicide. He shot himself. Always be the second Watenga Itigi Tilepanoi Uguba Ayagwe Linizwe Wahamba Numpela bought himself a one way ticket to a foreign land and disappeared forever. Always tart the third Washia Ijalman left Germany. Asazuguti. We don't know what their secrets were. However, when they, when they read these words addressed to them, all is revealed. They if, and maybe they thought sent maybe from a girl and they thought well now I'm done for these mischievous boys <laughs> did it as a joke a prank <laughs> but these three men disappeared when telegram if you get a telegram, everything has come to light regarding you, what would you do? <clears throat> For there is nothing hidden that shall not be revealed. Jesus said, do not fear men. 
ngo baba ngasuka bakubulale kodwa emva kwalokho abana ukwenza lutho for they might kill your body but after that they can do nothing to you anymore athi kodwa ngizonkhumbi khombisa lo fanele ukuthi nimesabe mesabe unkulunkulu ongakubulala emva kwalokho akuyise ekwahlulelweni but he said i show you the one to fear fear god who can kill both body and soul in hell futhi ngizonxoxela enye indaba eveza ukuthi umuntu uyafihla izono zakhe akathanda ukuzivezwa azidalule let me use another illustration to show how people prefer their sins to remain hidden they never want it to be revealed bekhona u king there was a king obele epersia king in persia undu nankulu wakhe ubeli juda and his prime minister was a jew inkosi le ibizwana nondu nankulu wayo bengamathe nolimi this king was great friends with the prime minister they were inseparable besondelene bezwana bethandana very close they really were very great friends with each other kodwa ngazi ukuthi kwenze njani kwavelani kwaphela ubhlobo nobungane but something happened that caused them to lose this friendship this closeness in calls yasuka yadinwa unduna nkulu olijuda engasafuna ukumbona and the king was so upset with his prime minister who was a jew he didn't want to see him again why is a kulumu king nabaluleki bakhe And so the king spoke to his counselors what a ngaz ukuthi kuzokwenza njani ngobuntuna nkulu wami asazwani angisafuna ukumbona and said i don't know what it is we don't get along anymore with my prime minister we just don't want to see each other again wasuka basuka bathi awunkosi Aksiyo inkinga leyo the counselor said oh king that's no problem athi kuinkinga what is it ngobe sizwe sonke siyamthanda uNdu nankulu is that the whole nation still loves the prime minister wathi bathi inkosi sokululeka they said king we will give you a plan kuluma nonDu nankulu olijuda speak to your jewish prime minister umtshele ukuthi umnika unyaka owodwa ukuba afundise inja yakho ukukhuluma and tell him that you give him one year during which he has to teach your dog to speak what you uma ngifundisa nga ngonyaka uyobulawa with the threat that should he fail in teaching the dog to speak within a year he will be put to death is is a song ke sakhathazeka sashaya ngomvalo sithi kodwa inkosi yakithi isingenweni but the whole nation was shocked and they wondered what had got into their king ai kwezwa kala umhlaba wonke ukuthi undabe zitha uthi unduna nkulu akafundisi inja yakhe ukukhuluma and they heard of this demand that the prime minister had to teach the king's dog to speak but in go by inja ai was ukukhuluma and they said because a dog can't talk bakhathazeka bonke kodwa unduna nkulu the whole nation was anxious but the king wasn't 
He was quite at ease. After three months, when nine were left, the people began to ask, can the dog speak yet? And the, it was said no. After six months, can the dog talk yet? It was said no. Is the king's dog speaking it? But it was said no. Lenja ibin kulu i hamba nongosi inga shugani na ye no me pepechea e Franci e Parisi aye matilopeni ube i patanjali njayak. For the dog would be with the king all the time, even if he would go overseas and go to Paris and places like that, the dog was there. Noma e otela ezolala kona incha ibikona. Even in the hotel, the dog would be there. Kwa hamba, kwa hamba, kwa so kwa sali nyange yotu anchi. And finally, there was just a month left. They asked the Prime Minister, is the dog talking yet? He said no. And they said, but aren't you anxious? Aren't you troubled? And the Prime Minister said, no, there's still 30 days, and in 30 days a lot can happen. And when it was very close, just a day left, that the dog should be brought whether, to see whether it could speak. The king then called the prime minister. And asked him, tell me, is my dog talking yet? What and the Prime Minister said, O oh, King, something awful has happened. The King said, What? He said, The dog has learned to speak. And it speaks non stop, O oh, King. It speaks when it doesn't matter who's around, it just keeps on speaking. But shamefully. But what's scary, O oh King, is this. This dog is speaking all the secrets of and the shameful things of the King. And it's Tell, it's talking about everything you've done, O King, when you were in Paris, how you went to the red light district. It's speaking about those things. It's just talking all the things. And it just refuses to keep quiet. It just speaks to anybody. The King was angry was furious. He said to the Prime Minister, kill the dog. He said, O oh, oh King, do not be worried at all. I killed it yesterday. 
ngathi angifuni ukuthi isuke iveze indaba because as in fisho senkosi i didn't want it to reveal your secrets o king nyabona ke inkosi yathintwa yini see what touched the king was the speaking of the daluna inkosi iveza zonke zonke izinto zayo ezingalungile he was afraid that this dog is really speaking all his a uh, secret things that he had done o jesu uthi akukho lutho okufihliweyo okungayi kwambulwa jesus said there's nothing secret that will not be revealed uma uhlangana no jesu uhlangana nezinto zonke zibe sobala If you meet with Jesus you are meeting with the one that brings everything to light. Uma ungcela ukuthi usuma mukele uJesu kodwa usahlezi nemfihlo zakho ngizothi namanga awukazohlangane noJesu ngoba uJesu ungokukhanya uma ihlangana nomuntu udaluleke konke and makes everything transparent. If a person says I have accepted the Lord and yet they are still living they've still got their secret sins I say no you've never met with the Lord because if you meet with the Lord he reveals all Uma uhlangana no Jesus if you meet with Jesus funda incwadi kuma hebe read in Hebrews ukuthi izi likankulunkulu liphilileyo read there about the living word Now Jesus said nothing that is hidden will remain not revealed everything will be revealed You can't accept Jesus Bese usuku thule nezinto zakho ngoba yena ukukhanya uyadalula izinto With your sins for Jesus' light he reveals you and shows you up Always fazana was a Samaria the woman of Samaria uhlangana no Jesus met with Jesus akazi ukuthi uhlangene nobani she actually didn't know who he really was u Jesus ukhuluma ngamanzi for Jesus spoke of water uma esethi ngiphe lawa manzi ukuba ngingomi njalo ukuthi ngiyozala ngizokukha manzi when she said lord give me of that water that i won't have to come continually to draw water from the well ungabhema noma mupu sikilit uzobuya uqaleke you see you can smoke any brand of cigarette you will crave for for another one ungasebenzisa idakamizwa you can use drugs uma usuwa sebenzisile Usuzo wafuna food that you will crave for more. Uma utagwa ugoloko. If you are drunk with alcohol. Uzo buyo wafuna food. Ophuza la manzi uzo uzo buyo ome food. You will get thirsty and want to drink it again, but the one who gives you the living water you'll never get thirsty. No muhlangana nesifebe. Even if you meet uhlangana namupho wesifazana. With a whole. Uzobuya ukufuna food. If you've been to an immoral woman, you will thirst to go back again. Futhi nina mantombazana anoqonda ukuthi umfana uma ithandwa mantombazana. Ngeke kuphele noma usoshada naye no uma usoshadile usazo ufuna abanye futhi uzoba phlunguke kuwe uma ezalisa ingane bese ubone esehlangana nezinye ingane ezinemnyaka ngaphansi kweminyaka yakho and girls don't be bluffed by a man who is a womanizer for even if you marry him he will continue womanizing till he messes around with girls younger than you are kuphela uma uhlangana no Jesu adalule zonke izinto zakho only meeting with Jesus who reveals everything and then forgives you 
and washes you in his blood. <coughs> Freeing you from the bondage of sin. Jesus says, he who sins is the slave of sin. But if the sun sets you free, you will be free indeed. If you meet with Jesus, he will reveal your sins through his Holy Spirit. And if, so if you say, Lord, give me of this eternal water, he'll say, go and fetch your husband. He'll touch upon the very point, the heart of the matter of sin. When the woman heard this, she ran back to the town. Telling people, come and see whether this might be the Messiah, for he has told me everything I have ever done. Do you know the Jesus that reveals everything that you have ever done just as he did to that Samaritan woman? All but Jesus remembers everything. He will point out everything. He even numbers the husbands. She might have forgotten the number of men that she had had. You might have forgotten the number of women you've messed around with. But Jesus says, when Jesus preached the Sermon on the Mount, he said, you have heard it said that he who uh, commits ad uh, adultery, um, he has sinned. But I tell you, even if you look at a woman lustfully, you have already committed adultery. <laughs> The Bible says when Jesus returns, he will judge everything, even the hidden motives, the thoughts. Tell me, does the word of the Lord give light into you now? It, has it dawned upon you yet, or are you still in darkness? If you say you've met with Jesus, can you, Can you tell people, come and see the one that told me everything I've ever done? Or has Jesus not, that, not done that for you? You need to check whether you have the right Jesus or not. Test and examine yourself. What does it help if you say, I'm serving the Lord, but when the Lord returns, he will shake his head and say, 
depart from me, for I never knew you. Let us bow our heads.